Today I wanted to show you a demonstration and a crash course on Dream Studio. I use these to create AI art with a variety of prompts. I'll show you how to come up with prompts, how to structure them, just a few things that I've learned along the way. I've been working with an AI company recently and helping them to develop some prompts. So I just want to show you what's possible, especially if you're thinking of giving AI art a try and you want access to some of the more advanced features. I think Dream Studio has uh, the capability for that. And it also generates the images a lot faster for some reason. So, so here on the side, you can see uh, allows you to alter the width and the height of the generated image. I just generally leave it on 512 by 512, though you can go all the way up to 1024 by 1024. For some reason though, when I generate images up to you know uh, 1024, they just get all these weird artifacts and repeating structures and especially when I'm creating portraits, it just doesn't look so good. The CFG scale here, as it says, adjust how much the image will be like your prompt. So if you have a higher value here, it follows the prompt much more literally. And here you've got uh, steps. So how many steps does to spend uh, generating a diffusing image? So it just increases the quality and the uh, complexity of your image. You've also got number of images. So uh, if you wanted to say, start with this prompt here, this is just the example prompt. You can generate a whole bunch of images like one to nine images. I tend to just leave it. I've been using it to just generate portraits. So I'm gonna leave this on the uh, default settings and I'm selecting stable diffusion 1.4. The reason why I, I use that and also 1.5 is that I find that the resulting images look a little bit more uh, like they've been painted a bit more natural rather than the uh, later versions, which seem to be more photorealistic. So I think it just depends on what look you're you're aiming for, but you can also have a, have a look around experiment with those different engines as well. This is a separate tool and website, Clip Interrogator, which I'll link in the description. It's a useful website if you, for example, you've got a particular scene from a movie or you've got a particular color scheme or a bit of art and you just want to see what prompts might generate art or scenes that look similar to the target image. So this is little Lana Wash drawing painting that I did in watercolors. And uh, there's two modes here, best and fast. I tend to select best. So now it's finished uploading my painting over here. And you can see a bunch of the prompts that it's generated from that watercolor painting of people walking down the street. I mean, that's pretty accurate. Watercolor, colored painting, watercolor wash, watercolor painting, colorful watercolor painting, vibrant. I've used vibrant colors in here. Modern European ink painting. That's, yeah, it's definitely, it's, uh, it's Venice. So drawing, watercolor, detailed art, and coral painting. It's also added in this artist there, Peter Fiore. Uh, watercolor sketch, watercolor painting style uh, by Helen Thomas Dranger, painted in bright watercolors. So, you know, I have to look up who these artists are. This guy sounds familiar. I'm not sure who she is, but uh, they might even have similar styles to myself. So it's just an interesting tool that you can use and you can use it on art or you can use it just also on your own uh, reference photos, pictures that you find on the internet as well, movie stills and stuff like that. Copied these prompts and I've just added them straight into Dream Studio. Let's click Dream and see if it comes up with paintings that are similar to my style. And it does kind of. Let's see if I can increase the width of this. 800 and maybe make it like 768. Uh, I mean, the, the color scheme looks kind of similar, a vibrant color scheme. I'm just, I'm just amazed at what it comes up with. I mean, it looks, um, actually looks like a proper watercolor painting. You can see in the corner as well, there's some kind of, I don't know what this is. It looks like a signature or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So it does come up with similar color schemes, but I think it's lacking the detail. Certainly lacking the detail that I want in there. I might put something like uh, intricate detail, uh, realistic something like that at the start and just see what 
comes up with. Wow. That's incredible. Look at this one up the top as well. I mean, I, I just can't believe when I'm looking at it that this was something that it that it's imagined up, obviously with influences from the internet and other artists, but I mean, still, look at that one there. Amazing. So here's a website that I use as well called lexica.art. It helps you to come up with some prompts to get started. If you want something that looks like a particular style in here, you can click it. For example, you know, I might click on ooh, this one here looks cool. And look at that. Tells you the, uh, the, the prompts actually used here. And you can see it also this is where you've got a few artists named that are mentioned here. Point of contention. And you can click explore this style as well to see what else has been generated. But it's a good place to get started. So, for example, I think what I'll do is that I'll, I'll type in, I'll type in something like, because I'm into sci-fi, I'll go Blade Runner uh, 2049. Let's see what it comes up with. So you've got, this is AI art that's already been generated. Uh, from that, from these, uh, from the prompts, when you click into them, it does look really Blade Runner esque, especially the city in the background. Um, you know, what's this one here? Clint Eastwood, 2018 Blade Runner movie, still young. Clint Eastwood, look at cityscapes. So, uh, I mean, let's have a look. What else do we have here? Uh, you know, you can really just keep on scrolling until you find a particular style or particular image that you like so this one here it's going to add the word portrait at the end to see if we can get some more just kind of faces looks like ben affleck this one and you know you can see how it's generated other other actors in the style that sort of blade runner style and for example, you might have this one here. I really like that, the look of this one. That's kind of a girl in a fur, fur coat. And you can look at the prompts that's been used. So I've got that prompt. I can just place that prompt, prompt straight in there. Select Dream. I've selected also Stable Diffusion 1.4. Let's just see what it comes up with initially from this prompt. Okay, so it does come up with some pretty cool images look at that but I do for example you might want to make the face stand out more so it says yeah Blade Runner 18 movie still girl look at the camera so it could be like we could change that uh, so movie still um, close-up portrait of a girl looking at city landscape just see what that does. So it has changed it up a little bit. Normally there are actually commas in between all these prompts. I don't know why for some reason um, Lexica hasn't included the commas in there. They usually just come with commas to separate out the these different prompts. But uh, you can see there's a little bit of, you know, if we, we can take out, for example, there's all the artists name. We can take out uh, these ones. Let's change this up 2000. So maybe we might go Blade Runner. 2049 movie uh maybe we'll just go close up portrait of a girl looking at uh, of a girl uh, fine comma realistic face pretty face uh, neon. Okay, that's referring to the color scheme. So you get these kind of really poppy, saturated colors. Puffy jacket. That's an interesting one. Blue futuristic. 
Okay, that's a color that uh, you want to feature in the composition, futuristic sci-fi. It's interesting how some of these prompts as well just come with weird uh, punctuation and comma elegance. So let's see, not too many, not too much information in there compared to the original prompt, but you can see uh, that has started to create some more closer up images, okay, like that. And for example, you might go put a close up portrait of a particular person. So let's let's try Bella Hadid. Um, fine, realistic face, futuristic, elegant. Um, you know, let's put in watercolor style. Uh, we can put in here dystopian city and prompts at the start of the of the of the whole thing apparently have higher weighting. So if you want something definitely to appear or have yeah higher weighting, just shift it over to the front. So I'll just change that. Just click Dream and see what it comes up with. So there we go. And you can see that's kind of got a bit of a watercolor type uh, style to it as well. Okay, I might try to put in this, change this prompt. I wanna put the portrait of that right at the front. And let's just see how that influences. It might be just place more emphasis on the subject. Okay, there we go looks a little bit more detailed. Um, you know, we can add other influences like uh, human, cyborg, human, cyborg, I don't know, cyborg. Mechanical or hmm, human machine hybrid. Okay, add like a kind of sci-fi theme to it. Let's see what happens. Okay, it hasn't really, hasn't really done too much. Some of this stuff here around the neck maybe. Um, so I can change the height of the, the photo as well. So we can go like a 704 and let's just see what happens. It generates a little bit more of the torso. Okay, not really. That one looks good. I like this one here at the top. That top right photograph there, that generated image. And uh, another thing you can do is you can actually get into this and generate more. Um, you know, for example, I've selected that one, click Dream again, and it will hone in on this particular style and generate others with that particular style. I'm going to add in 4K. Might make it a bit more detailed. Um, intricate details. Let's see what that comes up with now. And it's just this process of refining refining it until it comes up with uh, with something that, and I, I really like these, you know, that's more on the lines of what I'm looking at. I mean, there's obviously some references to uh, a movie Blade Runner in here, but I've excluded any uh, other artist reference references in there. You know, you can download them. You can click that little download button there and it downloads uh, these particular images. I think these look pretty cool. So you can also use, for example, if I want to create more in this particular style, um, what else do we have? Maybe, maybe this one actually. And um, you can then generate, uh, generate more images 
based on this one click guidance one um, you know we can just select four more images okay in that same sort of style and just see what happens looks pretty cool there's some kind of mechanical stuff going on here with her face uh, this one's kind of cut off the top but there's more of her uh, clothing in here another thing you can do you can actually start off with an image so if you've got a photograph of yourself or a particular scene you can actually use that uh, to start off with and then the AI will uh, alter that image based on the prompts that you put in there so you just kind of like a seed image I guess and uh, you know let's see what else we can do we can also increase the amount of steps so for example we might put this at uh, 150 steps okay so we'll make it more complex takes a lot longer I would say they look they, they look a little bit more mechanical you can see these two especially these the robotic influences and stuff start to come in there uh, I'll just reduce that down to like 30 steps again and uh, maybe bring that back and if you make it 512 by 512 it tends to just focus in more on the face um, yeah you can see here so I quite like this prompt but uh, yeah you can just continually change it up um, I mean just thinking what else I can put in here what color style there's uh, galaxy galactic Close-up portrait of fella who did in black trench coat. Blade Runner 2049. Maybe I just changed that prompt. Watercolor style galactic cyborg. Human. Um, maybe something like cyberpunk. I want that to be near the start of the prompt as well human machine hybrid 4k intricate details find disturbing city uh, elegant um maybe it's atmospheric we get some smoke or something in there let's just see what happens wow and look at that, that looks pretty cool. You know, it really looks like a watercolor painting, apart from the face. I mean, everything there in the background. It, it does look really like a watercolor painting. There you go. And we can go back, just have a look at the other ones. Um, I actually like this one. This one looks really quite interesting I find that some faces work a bit better than others as well so we can go um, you know let's change this around let's put someone else in here portrait of Anthony Hopkins it's interesting because there's also things like pretty face prompts in there as well uh, and there you go we've got Got some Anthony Hopkins stuff in there. It's not really what I was looking for. This looks almost too cartoony. Um, I think we have the prompt realistic in there. Yeah, we could put something like hyper realistic. Hyper realistic. Dash. Maybe I'll get, uh, get rid of that in black trench coat. Click dream. Yep, I like this actually. Much better. Really, really, quite realistic, and it looks like a watercolor portrait as well. Um, you can even specify close up portrait of a young Anthony Hopkins. And let's see what it comes up with. Sort of. Yeah. Um,. You know, we can put on, let's try someone else. Let's try portrait of Margot Robbie.
and uh, again, kind of more watercolory style. I mean, you can take out the style and put something in like oil painting and it will change it up so it doesn't look like watercolors anymore. So kind of, kind of, let's get Bella Hadid back in there. Let's see what it comes up with. Okay, so yeah, you get a bit more of this, uh, more detailed, I don't know if you call them brush strokes, but um, they almost look more like CGI generated image, especially this one here on the top right. I'm not a fan of that type of style. Um, click Dream and I've selected Stable Diffusion 1.5 and you can see the difference as well. Okay, so you start getting, these ones look a little bit more realistic. They look like almost CGI images. I think that might've been, uh, we've got that hyper-realistic prompt in there. I mean, if I take out the hyper-realistic prompt and leave the oil painting, it might come up with something that looks a bit looser and uh, more kind of with brush strokes in it. Yep, so it does now. It's kind of become a little bit less. Um, the hyper-realistic stuff was actually kind of interesting. I'll leave that in there. Let's see if we can, you know, put on Stable Diffusion 2.0. Okay, wow, these look really cool. These two don't really look like uh, that one, probably most, that one as well. And where else do we have here? Stable Diffusion 2.1, like some other build of it. Drop that in there and see what happens. And you get more of these sort of CGI looking images, I find, with the later versions. So, yeah, if we switch back to 1.4, you'll see what I mean. Okay, so it looks kind of a bit more natural, like as if it was painted or drawn by someone. So, yeah, just a little crash course. And as you can see, we've come up with quite a few things so far. It's been, I mean, I sat here in the computer for five or six hours doing this the other day. And uh, it's kind of addictive. <laughs> and at the same time, it's it's weird. I always feel a bit guilty as an artist. I'm, I'm a traditional watercolor artist as well. And it, the ease of just being able to just put in a few prompts, hit that button at times, I sometimes worry if it um, discourages me from making art. But, you know, I enjoy painting in any case. So I, I actually like to use this to generate some images and um, inspiration for my artwork. I've always wanted to create some kind of sci-fi watercolor art. I've made, uh, you know, a few pieces, painted a few pieces, but, you know, just having this tool at my disposal to generate, uh, you know, a few images that I could potentially turn into another bit of art, I think that's a really good tool for artists. So, yeah, I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you have found it helpful, make sure you click the like button. It just helps my videos to get out to more people. And if you want to see more of these tutorials and bits and pieces, make sure you subscribe.